This is a certified hood classic. Ray Gibson is trying to get into Club Spanky, owned by a guy named Spanky. The bouncer at the door doesn't want to let Ray in because Ray has been hustling in Spanky's territory. Ray then mentions the time he bought the bouncer's wife alligator shoes and he eventually got in. Just wearing pigs again when I met. I got out the swine, she went alligator. Let me in, help a nigga out. There you go, that's how it goes, brother. That's how it goes. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. In the club, there's Claude Banks. Him and his girlfriend Daisy are celebrating his new job as a bank teller. Until she starts talking about wedding rings and babies, which causes him to spill champagne on his suit. That's what respectable folks do. Yeah. Get a job, get married, start having babies. <laughs> he heads to the restroom to clean the champagne off. And that's when Ray notices Claude and decides he's going to rob him. But before that could happen, two loan sharks approaches Claude in the restroom and gave him an ultimatum. Look at here, $22. That's two weeks pay, man. I'm here with my girl. You gotta leave me something. How about your legs? Oh, oh those are good. Ray then enters the restroom. And when he saw Claude, he immediately pretends that they went to high school together. Well, I know you. What is your name? Claude Banks. Claude Banks! We went to high school together. How you doing, man? You went to Monroe? Yes, definitely. How you doing, man? Look at you looking all... Oh, sure. Let me feel good to see colored folks doing good for themselves. Yeah, well, I went to Jefferson. Claude wasn't buying the story, but it was enough time for Ray to pickpocket his wallet, which was already empty. Talk about insult to injury. Spanky got word that Ray's at his club and orders his goons to kidnap him and bring him to a lonely ass dock. He also got word that there's a guy that can't pay his large bill. That guy being Claude and orders his goons to kidnap him too. At the dock they meet Spanky and he's not happy. Now I got a job that starts on Monday. I'll pay you back with my first paycheck. Drop him. Ray tries to talk his way out the situation offering Spanky a cut on a bootleg run where he would smuggle alcohol from Mississippi back to Harlem. Let me tell you something, Ray. You fuck me on this, I'll spare no expense on your ass. I understand. Do you hear me? I hear you, Spanky. Spanky agrees and fronts him the money and the truck. Ray then asks to take Claude with him to make the drive quicker. He pushed his luck, but Spanky let it happen. They get to Mississippi, and before meeting the connect, they stop by a diner to get something to eat. Claude asks how much for a pie, but apparently they serve white only pies and shotgun shells. These are whites only pies. How much it gonna cost to turn one of them white only pies into nigga pie? How about I turn y'all into nigga pie? Message! Later on, they meet the Connect Slim, who is the exact opposite of his name. After buying 36 cases of alcohol from him, Ray decides to have some fun before heading back to Harlem. What goes on down there, Slim? That there's Natchez under the hill. They got gambling? Three. Girls? You boys ought to check it out. Claude was a bit hesitant, but ended up tagging along with Ray to a bar nearby. Ray begins playing poker, and it's not going good for him. Claude is just observing the scenery, but it doesn't look like he's having much fun either, until a hooker approaches him and insinuates that she wants to make sweet love to him. He told her that he only has two dollars, but that was enough to have a romantic night with the lovely lady. Ray continues to do bad at his poker game. And when I say bad, I mean he lost every penny. So he decides to bet a silver pocket watch his dad gave to him when he was a kid. And he lost that too. But not fair and square. One of the players at the table, Mr. Hancock, was cheating with the help of a waitress. But Ray didn't find out until after Mr. Hancock had left with all his money and his watch. After Mr. Hancock left, he was approached by Sheriff Pike. Pike previously told Mr. Hancock to leave town, and he obviously didn't listen. I thought we agreed that you was gonna leave town. I was gonna leave Sheriff Pike, but your wife, she begged me to stay. <laughs> Pike then hits Mr. Hancock with his baton, and Mr. Hancock slices Pike in the face with a sword he pulled from his cane, and that pretty much sealed Mr. Hancock's fate. Ray decides he had enough of Mississippi. Him and Claude began walking through a barn area on the way back to the truck with the alcohol, and that's when Mr. Hancock's dead body falls out of nowhere and landing right in front of them. Nah, nah, that can't be him, that dick dead. Ray felt little pity and took it as an opportunity to get his daddy's watch from Mr. Hancock's pocket. 
While Ray is looking for his watch, some locals came out of the dark with guns and assuming Ray and Claude had killed Mr. Hancock, took them into custody. A clear cut case of murder. The man was like that when we found him. That's the truth, you boys don't have anything to worry about then, do you? Life! Oh, you mean oh my God. God. They get to Camp 8, one of the many prison camps in Mississippi. Here they meet Sergeant Dillon and his trusty psychic, Hop and Bob. This is the gun line. Clear around the yard. You so much as stick your Johnson out over the gun line, you will be shot. And after that, it was ditch digging time. After ditch digging, all the prisoners are in the cafeteria. And some of the other prisoners start talking about the violent crimes that got them into prison. She was my half sister. So I cut her ass in half. What? Bro, what are you talking about? Not to look sore, Ray and Claude made up a story about being serial killers, murdering people from state to state. The fuck y'all do? Uh, a violent killing spree all around the country you've been killing people. There's no telling what I may do. Stab yeah, you, choke you, bite you. One of the prisoners named Gold Mouth, who looks like Butterbean if he was black, wasn't impressed. And the man's clothes cornbread. You gonna eat your cornbread? Mm -mm. I want you to have it. Ray, knowing it would be the first of many requests, told Claude to keep his cornbread. Hey man, he gonna eat his cornbread, all right? Fuck you. Goldmouth, now feeling disrespected by Ray, demands his cornbread. Maybe I ought to eat your cornbread. Oh, oh motherfucker, you can't have my cornbread. That's for damn sure. Which ultimately led to a fight between the two. <laughs> Ray lost the fight, but he gained a lot of respect from the other prisoners. Some time had passed and visiting day came around. Claude gets a conjugal visit from his girlfriend Daisy. She tells him that his cousin Melvin had filed the appeal like he had asked. She then asks, should Melvin do the same for Ray? Claude refuses, telling her Ray might have a mile long record and may only hurt his case. Melvin wanted to know if he should file an appeal on behalf of your friend too. Ray Gibson, he's the reason I'm in here. You tell Melvin to think about me, right? Just concentrate on me. Ray came up with his own plan to get out of prison. It involved a map to a town called Greenville and a whole lot of running. He brought the plan to Claude, but Claude wasn't feeling it. Come on, nigga, we can do this shit. Stop bullshit. Why are you always talking about we? There's no we, Ray. Not until he found out that his girlfriend Daisy was not only sleeping with his cousin Melvin, they were also planning on getting married. Now, Ray's plan don't seem so bad. Well, if you're thinking about booking it, I want in. I think we, we can make it. We? Hey, ain't you the one who told me wasn't no we? Ray starts a fake fight with Claude in order to get two rocks from Hoppin' Bob, which he uses to keep count of the prisoners. And when night came, Ray and Claude made a run for it, but was eventually caught after being chased through the woods by Sergeant Dillard and other guards. They spent two weeks in the hole as punishment. 12 years passes and Ray and Claude are still in prison. A new group of prisoners arrive. Among these new prisoners, there's this guy who can't speak at all. Not even one word. So Sergeant Dillard nicknamed him Can't Get Right. The boy can't talk. Something wrong with his head. Just can't get right, boss. Can't get right. But what can't get right, can't get right, was hitting the hell out of a baseball. And Ray and Claude learned this through a pickup game for the prison baseball team. A baseball scout for the Negro Leagues heard about can't get right hitting ability and came to Camp 8 to check him out. He liked what he saw and decided to get Can't Get Right a pardon so he could play for the Negro League. He also tells Ray and Claude that he will put in a good word for them. Uh, what about us? Don't forget to mention us. Yeah, you know, because we kind of like his, um, his handlers, you know, we take care of everything. <laughs> yeah, I'll put in a good word for you boys. Can't Get Right eventually got that pardon, but Ray and Claude wasn't so lucky. When the baseball scout got back to Camp 8, he only took Can't Get Right with him, claiming that pardons are expensive and they can't hit the ball like can't get right. I got him a pardon. What about me and Ray? I didn't see our names on that pardon. Pardons don't come cheap. I mean, that kid can hit. What can you guys do? This caused Claude to lash out on Ray, blaming him for being in prison in the first place. Don't you get it? We gonna die here. Now let me tell you something. My daddy died in a place like this because of that shit you talking. Maybe you just a chip off the old block. 
Man, you gonna take that back or we ain't friends no more. Newsflash, Ray, we ain't never been friends. And didn't speak for 28 years after that. Ray and Claude are now in their 60s and still in prison. Claude is sitting in the yard and he notices a pie cooling on the superintendent window. And it reminded him of the time he was refused the white only pie. Whites only pies. He took off running towards the pie as God shoots at him. But he manages to get to the pie and hid behind the superintendent mansion. But because he had such good luck, on his first bite, burnt his tongue and couldn't eat the rest because it was too hot. <laughs> as a form of punishment, Claude was put to stand barefooted on a case of empty glass bottles. Sergeant Dillard tries to assign Ray to watch Claude and shoots him if he falls off the bottle. In return, he would get his freedom. Ray refuses and ended up standing on a case of bottles himself. And it was during this punishment, Ray and Claude made amends and started speaking again after 28 years. After all these years of blissful sounds, I forgot how annoying the sound of your voice is. Ironically enough, Ray and Claude get transferred to the superintendent's mansion. The both of you have been transferred to the superintendent's mansion. And I, for one, won't miss you. One day, Superintendent Winkins' driver got sick, and he orders Claude to drive him to the bus station where they will pick up the new superintendent. Where do you think you going? Mr. Wilkins' driver got the flu, and he asked me to fill in for him. At the bus station, Claude quickly realized how much life he had missed out on. Everyone was young, joyful, and laughing, and he had nothing but a 65-year-old face to show. The new superintendent approaches the car, and Claude is shocked that it's none other than Sheriff Pike. He told this to Ray on a pheasant hunting trip with Superintendent Winkin and Pike. Are you sure you sure it was him? Some faces you just don't forget. While gathering the pheasants onto a van, Ray notices his father's watch in Pike's hand, the one he had lost to Mr. Hancock. Ray pressed Pike about the watch, and that's when Pike pulled a shotgun on Ray. Wouldn't mind I ask where you got that from, would you? My wife gave it to me on her anniversary some years back. Give me that scar on your face, too. Ray was able to swiftly disarm Pike and hits him with the butt of the shotgun, knocking him to the ground with the gun pointed at him. He got my daddy's watch! He killed with the handcuff! After an intense back and forth, Pike basically admits to killing Mr. Hancock, and he wasn't remorseful about Ray and Claude's life being snatched. Is there any truth in what this man is saying? At least the state of Mississippi got 40 years of cheap labor out of the deal. This caused Claude to lose his mind and tries to grab the shotgun from Ray to shoot Pike. In the midst of the scuffle, Pike grabs a 38 from his boot and pointed it at Ray and Claude. But before he could pull the trigger, Superintendent Winkins shoots Pike in the chest, killing him. I believe it belongs to me. Winkins then tells Ray and Claude he was sorry about them doing 40 years for a crime they didn't commit. He also said he would get them pardoned. I'll get Charlotte to draw up your pardon papers in the morning. But died from a heart attack that very same day. And Ray and Claude ended up doing another 25 years. Still in prison, now in the infirmary, 90-year-old Ray and 90-year-old Claude. Claude, you were right when you say what you say. Everyone don't never get out of this place. And you were right. By now, Ray had given up all hope of ever getting out of prison. He figured this is where him and Claude will die. But Claude, still with a little bit of hope left in him, came up with a plan. I think I got a plan. You got a plan? And one night, carried it out. Him and Ray stole two bodies from the morgue, placed them in the infirmary, and set the place on fire. And when the fire trucks came, they snuck into one of them. Everyone thought they died, but Ray and Claude was finally free after 65 years when the fire trucks left the next morning. This was a great movie. Eddie Murphy and Martin had great chemistry, a lot of funny lines, and some of them was even improvised. They also did a great job of making you feel the different emotions between Ray and Claude. It's funny and dark at the same time because for some people, this is their reality. I would definitely recommend checking it out if you haven't already. Thanks for watching.